Hey there, it's Kevin, and welcome to day number seven of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to 3D model a bike handlebar grip with embossed letters. You'll learn how to use the press pull feature, how to create text, and how to create a new body. So to get started, let's create a center rectangle on the front plane. We'll enter 1.25 inches for the height and 5 inches for the length. Now we're going to create the bike handle grip this way so we can add a pattern before we revolve it around. So I'm just going to use the rectangle sketch tool and draw one out. Now one great thing about Fusion 360 is that you can edit features later on in your timeline. So sometimes it's best to simply play around and try things out as we can always go back and change it. So after I draw this rectangle, I'm going to use the rectangular pattern tool to extend it across the length of the handle. I'll punch in 50 for the number of times to pattern the rectangle, and then I'll just drag the arrow over to the right. Now I'm just going to draw a line cutting the rectangle in half so we can revolve the top around the center axis. And again, we'll use the keyboard shortcut letter L for line and we'll click the first point and the second point. Now we'll call the revolve tool from the create dropdown list and we'll select the profile shape. And for the axis, we'll select the center line we just created. Now at this point, if I didn't like the thickness of these rubber grips, I could go down to the Fusion 360 timeline and edit the original sketch. Now I can either right click and select edit sketch, or I can just simply double click on it. Now if I zoom in a bit, I can simply drag around the first rectangle we created. And you'll notice because I use the pattern tool, all of the other rectangles will naturally follow any of the changes I make. Now once I'm happy with the position, I'll click the stop sketch button on the toolbar. At this point, I want to create an aluminum ring around the inner part of the handle here. To do so, I'll create a sketch on the left side by calling circle with the keyboard shortcut C. And I'm just going to click in the center origin and drag it out a bit further than the existing shape. Now I'll hit letter E on the keyboard for extrude and I'll drag it over half an inch. Now here's the important part. If we take a look at the extrude dialog box, we'll see the operation feature at the bottom is currently set to join. Now if I were to leave this set to join, then this shape we just created will join or literally be part of the rest of the object. But if I change this to new body, I will have an entirely different object which will allow us to make this a different material or color. So if I right click on this shape and select Edit Appearance, I can drag an aluminum material onto it. And you'll see that it only applies to this part of the object because we created a new body. Now every time you create a new body or component, you'll be able to look at it in your Fusion 360 browser. So we'll go ahead and close the appearance dialog box and now we'll want to make our handlebar grip hollow so it can slide onto a bike handle. So under the modified dropdown list, we'll create a new shell. We'll select the side of the handlebar and I'll enter the dimension of 0.05 inches. Now I want to add some text or branding to the handlebar, but first I'm going to need to clear a surface on the side. To do so, I'll zoom in on the right and I'll right click on the farthest grip here in order to create a new sketch. So I'm just going to draw a circle slightly smaller than the width of our handlebar grip. And I'm going to draw a line across the top and the bottom. Now again, I'm just guessing here. And if I'm not happy with the result, I can always go back and edit this later on. 
We'll have to now view it from the right corner again, and we'll hit letter E for extrude, and we'll cut away most of this by dragging the arrow over to the left. And I can click on the fifth or sixth ring here to get the extrude cut to snap to it. And I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize the cut. Now to create text, we'll select text from the sketch drop-down menu and select the center plane on the X axis. With the text feature, the first thing you always have to do is select where the text will start. So I'll just click anywhere here as we can always move this and then I'll go ahead and type in Mountaineer as the brand. In the rest of the text dialog box, you can play around with the text height, the angle, the font, and a few other options. So I'm just going to tweak the options here until I'm happy with the result. And then I'll click OK to exit the text feature. Now if we view this from the left side, we'll see the text is just floating on the plane in the middle of our grip. So we'll have to extrude so it pops out of this outer surface here. But instead of using the extrude command, I'm going to right click on the text and select the press pull feature. So the main difference with the press pull feature and the extrude feature is that press pull works on faces and or edges, while the extrude feature works on a sketch profile or planar surfaces. So you'll have to select your text if it's not already selected for the profile. And then I want you to take note of where the arrow is currently at. Okay, it's in the middle of our grip just next to the text. Now in the extrude dialog box, we're going to change the start from to from object and then select the outer cylindrical surface here. Now you'll see the arrow jump to the outer surface. So if we type in 0.03 inches for the distance, you'll see that our text is being extruded from the cylinder here and not in the middle where our text plane actually is. Now obviously that is what we want, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Now taking a look at this, I don't like how much space is around the text. So once again, this isn't a problem because we can go back and edit features. I'm going to right click and edit the sketch, and I'll just drag the lines around until they're closer to the text. I'll hit stop sketch on the toolbar and take a look at these new results. And I can go ahead and keep playing around with this until I'm happy with the final results. Lastly, I'll throw a fillet of 0.1 inches on the edge here and I'll add the appearance of rubber to make it a bit more realistic. And if I want to edit the color of an appearance, I can just double click on it and then change the color. Now another cool thing that I can do here is I can hold down shift and select the face of all of the letters of our branding, and then I can drag a different material to it and change that color to red. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this a couple letters at a time. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button below if you learned something in this video. And click subscribe to be notified of the next video where I'll show you how to 3D model a doorstop using the chamfer tool.